Let's just get into this. This is he's not a stranger to the show. He's come on several times and you know, it's Christmas time. He's beautiful. He's got cool Christmas cards going out and uh, you know, Murder City got involved in the cool new organization. So we're going to bring in the man, the myth, the legend, Brad Felipe El Taco Petronic. What's up, uh, guys? man? How's it going? Good. How are you? Uh, I'm pretty much fantastic. Thank you. Um, so you guys, you fuckers, you get sober from alcohol and you all lose a bunch of weight. You know, when I yeah. got sober from heroin, I gained 40 pounds. Wow. Well, that was the Bullshit. wrong one. What happened when you stopped drinking alcohol, though? Well, I didn't really drink much. I was, I used to, so. So nothing changed. Yeah, no. Well, I mean, <laughs> sort of. Like, I used to nurse beers, and, but I'd really be on, like, ketamine or whatever. And, uh, uh, but anyways, we don't need to talk. That's not why we're here. I just, the you guys brought about, up the sobriety. I was like, oh, man. What the hell? Yeah. And now you're in this sweet, awesome room with, Horns on the wall, smoking your corn cob pipe, smoking your it, corn cob pipe like a Briar, Frosty but... the Snowman. <laughs> He's I, so actually, I am smoking Christmas cheer right now too from uh, the year two thousand. Wow, it for that long, a Christmas tree cake from the year two thousand. <laughs> you are smoking it. Wow, that's, that's all the sugar. Oh, all that's all the sugar in there. That's how you're. Yeah, you're like that oh, you guys that, that oh, look, here we heroin. go here we go guys we have uh andrew mattson tomorrow he's 10 oh. years sober dude awesome congratulations and you gained 20 pounds in the past year <laughs> i i actually weigh the most i've ever weighed in my life so i get it's it because, you know why brad it's because you're happy you're happily married you found a wonderful woman and life is great for you you have nice. a green office with a vent so you can smoke in there. It doesn't yeah. get any better than that. You're happy. Speaking I of, am. I really am. You know, you, Scott, you really, you know me well. <laughs> life, life is good. Speaking I, I have, of your life being good and having a cool family, do you want to debut this, this yeah, work let's of show art? Everybody, show everybody my Christmas card. Are you ready? Uh, We're debutting it. Are you ready? Are, are they ready? They're Wait not ready. No, Here we are. No. This let's is, see if this guy's ready. Nico's ready. Yeah, he's ready. He's ready. All right, Nico, here we go. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know them. <laughs> this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my whole life. I was this is the happiest I've ever been getting a Christmas card <laughs> in my entire life. Oh, thanks. Like tell everyone about this thing. Yeah, what is this? Happening? Is, this has been an ongoing thing for you for at least what five years uh longer so <clears throat> i actually i've been putting out i've been sending out christmas cards custom christmas cards that i i do um since i moved to massachusetts which was like over 10 years ago i think um maybe or probably about 10 years ago uh it started out because i worked at a stationary company and our christmas bonus was you we were like 50 free cards um what's is there something going on sorry Oh, no, just was, keep going. I was being stationary. He was being stationary. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "What did I do? Did it freeze?" <laughs> god, god. I, I picked that one up, Scott. I, it took me a minute to get the rotary phone one, but the stationary, oh, I, I yeah, got oh, that good. Right away. Yeah. So, yeah. So I used to do it with just me and my dog, Obi. Um, my very first card I sent out was actually a drawing that I did, um, and I sent them out. I only had fifty people. I sent them to, uh, and then. Actually, the second year I sent them out, I sent a photograph with the cards. And the photograph was of me and my dog. And uh, he, I was holding him. And he actually had uh, his red rocket was showing, was popping out. <laughs> it was like, it was perfect. It was so uh -oh. good. Hold so on. my cards have been inappropriate. As at, soon as you said oh, red rocket, Nico no. took off running. He did not <laughs> like that. <laughs> anyway, Shit. go ahead. Um, also, is it okay that I, I curse? I apologize. I do. Yep. I, I, you were good. Sometimes. All right. Go ahead. I figured it was okay, but like yeah. at the same time, I want to be respectful. And you're fine. Um, yeah. So anyway, so I've been doing it for many, many years. Um, now I have a family that I get to I get to continue this tradition with, and uh, they're getting into it. They're actually really, really getting into it. Um, the very first one I sent out with them, I actually told everybody. So it's me, my wife, my two stepkids, and um, my stepkid's best friend. So Devin, uh, chef. And see, Mr. Hanky. Yeah, and Mr. Hanky. But Mr. Hanky's not in every year. Oh, um, okay. So anyways, so chef, 
which is Devin, is uh, my my stepson Preston's best friend. Uh, he lived with us for a little while, um, so he's basically one of us. But when we first, when Misty and I first started dating, uh, and Devin was coming around a lot, I actually told my whole family, all my friends, that Devin was my long lost son that had been estranged, and then he came around. Um, in that when I was on heroin, I had slept with a prostitute and that he was the outcome of that. And he finally came around and found me, I told my dad this, told my sister, I, you know, I told everybody and my sister, actually, I'm pretty sure she believed me. She's like, what? Uh, are you serious? Really? Oh my God. What the? It, it was good. It was really good. And actually I kept it going on for a couple of years, but now everybody knows I'm full of shit. Well, everybody knows for sure now. Yeah, well, yeah, because I just, yeah. I just told you guys. Um, <laughs> Dude, that's hilarious. That's an amazing, like, did you did you get him in on it, or did you just? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because and and he, he kinda... came to the wedding. Um, so, like, we told everybody at the wedding, too. Like, yeah, this is my son. <laughs> now, people, I mean, okay, so you have to understand that pretty much everybody at the wedding knew me, so they – we're pretty sure I was full of shit anyways, but, but they weren't a hundred percent. No, exactly. I, I kept them guessing and that's all that matters. That's absolutely, that's the, that's the best. You just 100% commit to something that yeah. may or may not be true and just, just roll with it and just see what happens. You never know. It's, it's fun. I, you know, I learned from my dad. He's been doing it since I was a kid. And so now I'm pretty much just like my dad. You so, know what, Brad? Yeah. You're oh, I, I did. I did do it. You're, you get, you did it. You get the star. <laughs> you get the best star, too. Scott, I Thanks. miss I miss having you here. Why why did you have to move to Texas, man? The weather is much nicer down here. Yeah, and honestly, the barbecue is better, too. I yeah. uh, I do love your state. So Yes, it is nice. It is. I, I would move Texas there, is actually. amazing. I do, I do miss it up there. You should. Though. You should move to Dallas. Oh, my God. Chapo's right there. Yeah. Yeah, we've been seeing I know, him a start lot. Murder City, Texas. I'm not. I'm not moving there. to Texas though. I love Detroit too much. Um, I already moved away for a little while to New England, and it was fun. But this is my heart is here. So um, I might move to the west side of the state, but I'm staying in Michigan. Hmm. Mid- just, the mitten. Just love it up there. Yes, the mitten. Exactly. We have the mitten. Uh, Sorry, I was doing it wrong too. But yeah, I, I do. Mi- I do miss it up there. One of the things that I def. I mean, I I definitely miss Detroit though. Like Detroit's like one of my. One I mean, of my it's great the greatest city in the, in the world. So well, and and you guys throw the best one of the best competitions in the country. I just I absolutely oh, love it. And thanks, man. I, I fun. really kind of sucked that I missed this year when you guys moved venues to the new place, but it sounded like it was a really good time and everything. You, you but definitely uh, missed out. It was it was a cool uh, venue this year. Yeah, it was it was fun. I had a good time. I'm very happy with the new venue. Uh we're going we're gonna have it there again this year or next, next year. Yeah, 2023. Uh obviously 2024 we won't have the circus. Oh uh, because we're gonna have Great American. <gasps> um which is gonna be very fun um so we actually we have the masonic temple booked for great american which is a giant building but we're actually doing it in the fountain ballroom which is in the basement um oftentimes weddings are held there but it's it is a really really cool spot like super old um it's you know it's an old mason temple like yes yeah. that's, that's what it is it's, a cult. Um, it's also haunted um which is pretty cool and just outside of the room that we have is also a barber shop that we will have access to. Um, so our plan is is to bid it out um, and have barber, local barber shops bid on it and sponsor uh, the event. Um, and you, they get to, they get that room and they can cut hair and cut beards and um, so it'll, it'll be pretty cool. Scott and I should bid on that room and we should cut sure. beards. Yes. I, <laughs> you're I gonna like do, this. You're going to start cutting all the goatees off so you can win your categories. Duh. Turn I everybody into chops. Everybody. We're, we're, we're throwing a competition. To the too. Yeah. Oh, we're throwing a competition too at the basement of the Alamo. Mm-hmm. It's very prestigious. That. Yeah. Dude, that's sweet. Basement of the Alamo. Wait, right when is the, this? Uh, yeah, we you know, haven't picked a date up. yet. Oh, cool. It's well, up, don't man. do it in November. That's all I ask. And if you do it in 2024, don't do it in September. That's all I ask. September 2024 is when we were really kind of shooting to have it. Probably like the second or <laughs> third or fourth weekend. Maybe the first weekend. I, I don't know. We, we haven't so really... the, do you want to know the actual date of Great American? Sure. 
Uh, twenty. Or, I'm sorry. Um, September twenty first of twenty twenty four. Yep. So yeah. September twenty first. Talking Beards, the club is going to be in Breaking the basement news. of the Alamo. That's not even cool, man. I mean that. I mean it's totally cool, but don't do it the same date as us. Sorry. God. Just, I mean it's been planned out like this for for years. You like, can't just years. get the basement of the Alamo like oh a quick phone call. Yeah, we had to. Yeah, we had to work. We had to. Pee Wee had to be involved. You're gonna make me cry, Pee Wee. Yeah. Uh, how do How do you think we got in the basement of the Alamo? Wait, like Pee Wee Herman? Yeah. yeah. Pee Wee Herman helped us get. Wait, the, is, Cheech, is Cheech gonna be there too? Of oh. course. Oh, He's man. a judge. All right, I'm coming. Fuck Great American. <laughs> You're not even going to Great American now. <laughs> Whatever, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to your guys' cop. <laughs> it's going to be way more, way more exciting. But uh, yeah. so, anyways, speaking of exciting things, other than you guys hosting one of the greatest uh, events, uh, Great American in 2024, you said. Yes, sir. And we'll- We'll probably have you on before that event. Yeah, if we're still playing in I'm going to probably say we'll probably have Brad on at least a half a dozen more times between now and then. <laughs> Dude, I'll come on whenever you want. Hey, man. Uh, I, I'm, I'm more than happy to come and just shoot the shit with you guys. But anyways, the Murder City uh, Facial Hair Crew uh, just got accepted to be in the WBMA. Now, it that's did. pretty exciting. So tell us about that whole process. Yeah, so... Um, well, Logie and I went to Worlds in Austin a couple of years ago in, what is it, 2017? 17. Yeah, <clears throat> and it was a lot of fun. Um, we really wanted to be more a part of, our club really wanted to be more a part of, you know, the, the Worlds. Um, so we applied. Uh, we applied recently, and one of the reasons we did, because I had never even thought to apply, we were already, like, a part of the Alliance, uh, Beard Team USA, all of the things that or for you know north america yeah. um, but then like why not take it worldwide like it, it was brought to my attention when uh, mad viking was trying to bring worlds here um and i was like oh well we can't vote because we're not a voting club so i was like well we need to apply because what's up Diggs? We, we need to be able to vote and i'm hoping that i can make it to worlds next year in 2023 uh in germany i'm really really trying uh, the only thing is is it's the same time that my stepdaughter has finals and like, there's a lot going on, um, right. but I'm figuring it out. Cause I really, really want to make it happen. I'd, I'd love to see you over there with us for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That you guys are going to be there for sure. Like I, that is one more reason I have to go. Um, and I, I mean, I've never been to Europe, so I really, I just it's scary go. over there. It is scary. People Super die scary. daily. People All dude, die. I'm from Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're good. <laughs> uh, oh my god, did I tell you the story about? No, I probably haven't. So my wife, she was dropping my stepdaughter off at school one day, and she's driving down 94, which is the freeway we live by. And it was around Halloween, and she calls me up, and I'm on my way to go. I, so I teach on Fridays, and it was a Friday, so I'm on my way into work to go teach. And she calls me up, and she's like, you know, I just saw the strangest thing. I thought it was like. Halloween decoration or something it, it had to have been because it's around Halloween but it looked like a body on the side of the road and it was like all folded up and it kind of looked like it was a kid and then I'm checking the news when I get to work and sure enough they found a dead body on the side of 94 that's what she saw like wow yeah like which is insane to me I've I've never come across anything like that just 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 Detroit stuff really yeah I mean well actually this was um St. Clair Shores which is a relatively nice area but it is like right on the border. Of it came from Detroit. Clearly. Yeah. Well, actually, no, it came from Southfield. Which So I live east of Detroit and it came from west of Detroit, which is kind of strange. Hmm. Um, but I just thought that was an interesting story. I still about blame Detroit. <laughs> huh? I still blame Detroit. That, that's fine. You can. Yeah. But no, we have to listen. We're trying to promote that Detroit is safe. Oh, we yeah. To to the, the outskirts of Detroit. That's yeah, exactly out, yeah don't go in the outskirts. Just go into oh, the heart of Detroit. Just that's go into the heart, and that's yeah. that's fine. You know, that's that's where you know Eminem's from, and and Fago. Yeah, and Isha. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. Isha, I'm the unholy. You can't We're stop good. me. You can't hold me. Get all right. Um. So, uh, another thing about Great American, we uh, one of the things we're planning is an art show. Um, it'll be the either the Friday or the Thursday before, but it'll be going on all weekend, but we'll have like the debut. Um, But it's actually going to be Eric Perry um, showcasing his portraits from the circus over the years, because he's been shooting since the very first circus. Um, So he's going to have his portraits up. It's going to be a whole thing at an art gallery right down the street. 
all walkable. Um, it's going to be in, uh, they call it Midtown now, it used to be the Cass Corridor. Um, but <clears throat> I was speaking with the owner of the gallery, and he actually knows, like, I guess the mayor or the person that runs um, that part of Detroit. And like a mafia boss? Uh, something like that. Like okay. a, it's, I don't know what it's called. Like the, they you, have an organization that kind of. When you say mayor and you use the word organization, that's well, mafia boss. But it's, yeah, it's a legit version. Okay. <laughs> He's um, voted in by the people. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to make it a whole thing. <laughs> so we, we're going to turn the uh, Midtown area and the Cass Corridor area into just a big facial hair celebration the whole weekend. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to be a good time. I'm, I'm really working, looking forward to it. To like you working on stuff. other things to go along with this, any type of like street fair type stuff or. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're going to work with the, the, I don't know what they actually, what we would call them. I just said the mayor cause they basically oh, like run the, that part of Detroit. Or like like either like a chamber of commerce. Yeah. Yeah. Either, it's either like, a, it's a, that's what it is. It's like a yeah. chamber of commerce, but for, it's not for the whole city. It's just for that part of the city. Oh, all right. That makes sense. Um, I think they call it the Cass Corridor. I don't know what they call it, but anyways, um, yeah, we're working on some fun stuff. I'm, Dude, that's I'm, that's gonna be amazing. Like you're just gonna completely turn Great American into this big giant festival that whoever comes along behind you is just gonna have to live up to it. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 the hopes. That's exactly what we're we're planning to do. Um, we've you know we've got a lot of big ideas. It's just making them happen now, and we're meeting all the right people. So, Steve I, Eiserman's going to be a judge. <laughs> no, we want actual oh. people, a part of the beard community, to be judges. Oh. Um, but Steve Eiserman would be cool. Eminem would be cool. Uh, Tim Robinson, are you familiar with Tim Robinson? Yes, the director slash actor who was in the Shawshank Redemption. Yes. No, That's not great. Tim. Ro- not Tim Robbins. Tim Robinson. He used to write for. Um, He's, he was the center. To watch the show Detroiters. No, um, there's another show on Netflix called like So You Think You Can Stranger Affirm. Things. He yeah. was in Stranger Things. Yeah. Wow. Anyways, he used to write for Saturday Night Live. Uh, he was actually on Saturday Night Live as well. He's from Detroit. I went to high school with him. Um, so maybe we can get him involved somehow. Brad awesome. has That's famous cool. friends. Wow. Well. Acquaintances. He was in a punk band that I used Tim to Tim Allen's going Tim to Tim Allen's from Detroit. He used to sell See? drugs, man. See? You probably know him. I, yeah, I should know everybody that sold drugs. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, unfortunately, I don't. I mean, actually, it's probably fortunate. Glad you do. Your friend is Tina Fey. Tina Fey? What? I'm Tina Fey. Oh. Wow. We've got Tina Fey on the show tonight. Jeez. This is amazing. Just doing my best. <laughs> You're doing, doing a great life. job, Tina. Wow, this is this is a lot of this is a lot of excitement going on up in uh for you guys up in Detroit. Uh I mean, congratulations on getting into the WBMA. Congratulations on getting the Great American. Congratulations on another year of a great uh circus of whiskers and finding a new venue and congratulations on just being awesome. Oh, That's you. It's our it's our club. You. It's not me, it's our club. I know. I yes, it is a lot you it is a lot of the club. club. You're just awesome though. Oh, thanks. I, you know, I try. I, um, <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I'm just me. I do love though that you do, uh, like, you do have a really great group of guys and girls involved with the Murder City Club that are just they've been there for a long time. You have like one, you're like one of the longer running clubs that has a lot of like OG members that are just been. St- have stuck it out and really helped you guys grow. And I mean, it, it's like, too. what was that? We've actually got a lot of new members too. Um, we're continuing to grow. It's like, it's weird. So Chapo moved to Texas yeah. and all of a sudden he's like, a lot of the newer guys are getting more and more involved. Um, there was a time where it was just me and a couple of the guys that were getting everything going, but now everybody's really getting involved. Um, a couple of the guys in the club are stagehands for different venues around the city too. So like we're really getting more involved with the different venues and really putting on bigger production stuff. Like um, we're like for great American, 
we're going to be doing the lighting and everything because we, one of our guys does it at that yeah. venue for nice. different events. So yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, it's definitely not. I mean, it's just like Austin, uh, the club. I mean, when you have a production crew that you can bring in that you work with, I mean, it just makes the, it takes the event to a completely new level. Yeah, which is exactly. Awesome. Yeah. We're, uh, we're very excited about it. I mean, we're very excited about it. Well, I can't wait, man. I, I just want to show everybody our city. I mean, to be honest, I just, I love Detroit so much. I've, I've seen it grow and change so much over since I was a kid, but really over the past 10 years, it's, it's insane. Like Scott, did you, you came with us on a, I gave everybody a tour of the city before, right? Did, yeah, I didn't you, go with you. Oh, okay. Well, I gave a bunch of people a tour of the city. I took them inside a couple of abandoned buildings, um, did a lot of real Detroit things, took them to get tacos, of course, because that's what I do. Um, but now I can't take people inside abandoned buildings anymore because first off, they're all getting torn down. And second off, it's, it's actually a targeted offense. Now, after that time, when I took everybody, I got, I got a ticket for going inside an abandoned building. Really? How did, they photos. Give, how did they give you a ticket? They caught me when I was coming oh. out. Yeah. When I, when I came out, there was a cop right there. I was like, oh shit. I just figured I'd be like, Hey, how's it going? You know, it's not a big deal. I'm just inside this building, whatever. Cause that's how it always was, but now it's a targeted offense and, and they actually don't want you going in these buildings. Hmm. One of the reasons they told me was like two weeks prior, um, somebody had died because the staircase in this building that I was in collapsed when they were on it. So it's like, okay, I guess it makes sense. Um, why they're not letting people in or they don't want people in these buildings anymore, but um, still kind of a bummer. Like these are the things that I grew up doing and now you can't do it anymore. Mm. There's a lot of things that we can't do that we used to do when we were kids. Yeah. Well, the world and, changed. Right. And then look at this, <laughs> like all these little fuckers. I got arrested for possession of marijuana when I was in high school. Now it's legal. It is like straight up legal here in Detroit. People just go to a dispensary and buy it. I bought this house that, that I'm living in. There were pot plants growing in my backyard when I bought this house. I was like, what? What is going on in the world we live in? Mushrooms are legal here almost. They're, I know they're legal in different cities in Michigan okay. now. Like, it is insane. Like, all of the things I got in trouble for are like, now it's, oh, you can do whatever you want. So I just, but the things that you used to do and not get in trouble for, now you get in trouble for them. Like, going in buildings. Right, exactly. Everything is flip-flopped on me. It's like, what is... What is going on? Back in my day, I used to be able to go in abandoned buildings and I would get arrested for drugs. Now you just get to do drugs. You can't go in buildings. Yeah. What the hell? I ain't whippersnappers. God. What is well, so Andrew has an actual question from the from the chat here. He wants to know, will there be a drag queen bingo pre-party for Great American? You know, that's a good idea. Um, we might do it. We thought it had kind of worn itself out over the because we had done it like four years in a row, I think, or three People years come for that. Oh yeah. And let, that's the thing. Maybe it's just our guys that kind of got worn out with it. Um, they're just like, ah, it's the same jokes, the same person. Like let's try something new. But I really liked drag queen bingo. And I think that is something we could definitely bring back for great American, because that was something that was a part of our competition for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we'll do it for the circus next year, just because Honestly, we're just going to follow a recipe that we followed this past year. Worked. Because we want to, we want it worked right, and we want to focus on Great American. Yeah, so, so you just follow the recipe for that one, but bring back yeah. Drag Queen Bingo. Yeah, like, I, I think that's a good idea, and I think we might do it. Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly like the only problem with Drag Queen Bingo is is it would be on a Friday night, and that's when registration needs to be. So uh, make it a whole event registration at Drag Queen Bingo. There you go. <laughs> I, we'll figure something out. How yeah, about man. you guys figure something out? How about y'all figure that. something out? How about I that, do that? We yeah. could even. I'll. I'll reach. Never mind. I'm not going to brainstorm with you guys, but it is a possibility. We'll leave it at that. But, hey, like it. just as I always say, right there, you can see it on the wall. What you create, you imagine. <laughs> that is, that is true. It 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 is. Yeah. It is true. Brad, thank you for coming by tonight. I know hey. it's kind of last minute, and we're like, what are we going to do for a show? And we're like, well, we need Brad on, obviously. And then we added these other people, and it turned into a whole thing. But thank you for coming on. Hey, we appreciate thanks for having it. me.
I think that maybe we should just have you every year right before Christmas to unveil the Christmas card. I'm so, more than happy to do that. I, you know, with Brad. So the past two years, so last year we did um, It's Always Sunny. This year we did um, South Park. But I don't want to do like a TV show or a movie anymore. So next year is going to have to be something totally different. So talking beards inspired. Good thing. Oh, I can, go. All right. I'll, try. I'll see if I can grow a goatee. There you go. Perfect. All right. Well, right, well Andrew guys. said this right oh, here also. He said El Taco Tuesday should be a weekly segment. So, I mean, what's shit. the taco of the week, Brad? Chorizo. There it is. Actually, chorizo and potato. See you next week with the taco of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. I'll at least comment about the taco of the week. All right. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Brad. All right. Thanks, guys. I love you guys. Bye. We love, right, you, too. love Bye. you too. Merry Christmas. Bye. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.